Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Etebekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010 in Russia. Uh, today we are continuing our topic on uh, mold uh, and uh, fungal uh, mycotoxins. And uh, in the last video, we discussed uh, what symptoms they may cause, how they cause immune dysfunction, how they cause allergies, which uh, misdiagnosis usually people get and uh, why they fail the treatment. And in this video we will talk about the diagnostic measures, what to check, what to test and what to do. So let's get started. So first of all, you must check visually if you have mold anywhere in your apartments or in your working place. And if you find it, struggle with it. It's not good to be chronically exposed to mold. Next one. You can call for some services that will check, uh, take the samples, uh, check uh, what is that. Some will take it from just from the air in the middle of the room. Some will take the samples. But the best uh, way is to take the dust and uh, take several samples in different places. Next one. Allergy skin testing is not very helpful because there are 400 different types of mycotoxins and uh, a lot of types of uh, uh, mold uh, uh, fungi, but uh, we have a very limited uh, number of uh, skin test samples. And if this test is negative in you, that doesn't mean you are don't have any exposure to any mold. And Ig in serum seems uh, to be not very helpful. Next, one more uh, method is re-exposure. For example, the person lives in his uh, mold-affected uh, apartment and he, he's got this sick building syndrome, then uh, he uh, transfers to some other place, lives there for one month, he gets better, then he gets back to his uh, previous uh, place and uh, re-experiences all the symptoms. That is, That means there is something that causes it in his first apartment. Next, many scientists, they offer to check mycotoxins in urine. The problem is when we eat uh, many foods like beans, coffee, different uh, grains, beer, grapes, fruits, uh, it may all have some small amounts of mycotoxins. And of course, these mycotoxins will be found in urine, but it doesn't mean that the person has any problems with mold. And actually, there are, again, 400 different mycotoxins. There are other tests. VCHS testing, visual contrast scale, and MSH, leptin, antibodies uh, tests. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. I want to tell you that um, I read a lot of uh, different articles and a, ro a lot of algorithms uh, from different countries, official or some PubMed articles. And there is no single consensus, no single perfect method, no single perfect treatment. But we will discuss what we have. Some are very interesting and promising. Dr. Andrew Campbell is a doctor who works with mold for many years and researches mold. And according to his opinion, the best way to check for mold exposure is to check for immunoglobulins G against mycotoxins. And as the doctor says, that um, if we're talking about viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites, IgG means uh, previous exposure. But because mycotoxins are not living organisms, the IgG means current exposure in this case. And if mycotoxin is not there anymore, this IgG will go down very fast. Unfortunately, only few labs in the world can check for this IgG against mycotoxins. Antibodies class E uh, may be sometimes valuable, according to Dr. Campbell, uh, if there is uh, also mast cell activation syndrome. So, again, serum antibodies against mycotoxins. Tests that are lacking uh, evidence are organic acid test and HLA type test. These are not valuable. So, IgG against mycotoxins. IgE, not against mold, against mycotoxins. IgE, 
and uh, autoantibodies because again mycotoxins cause uh, the dysfunction of immune system and a lot of autoimmunity especially antibodies against neural system but also anti-nuclear anti-smooth muscle different types of antibodies okay and now let's go back and talk about this vision contrast testing uh, system that was developed by dr shoemaker maybe him only or maybe his co-authors also the thing is they did a study on humans exposed to mold living in these uh, water damaged uh, buildings and they had a lot of different symptoms like fatigue muscle aches uh, ice peak uh, pain it's uh, uh, stabbing pain in uh, head then uh, joint pain headache light sensitivity uh, sinus congestion uh, cough shortness of breath tingling in extremities due to neuropathy memory loss difficulty with concentration confusion uh, due to damage to brain excessive thirst frequent urination maybe due to hormonal changes night sweats mood swings appetite changes and here you can see this is intensity of symptoms uh, when they just uh, saw these patients uh, for the first time this is when they started their treatment uh, then uh, with cholesteramine uh, this is when they finished treatment this is when these individuals went back to their place with mold you can see uh, symptoms came back but not as strong and here again they started treatment and the thing is this visual contrast scale uh, this is contrast you can see the lines white dark white dark and when you do this test these um, lines become less and less contrast here you can see you can hardly see them already here you can see you do it one by one uh, it's not very precise test but all the participants had a problem had positive test meaning they may have the problems um, by the way i did this test also and it also told me that i have problems and maybe i am mold exposed that's why i also want to check my auto antibodies and they developed this test because uh, they wanted to evaluate the neural system dysfunction um, this visual contrast uh, depends on the health of uh, new optic nerve of your eye right uh, how the blood flow occurs because during the inflammation uh, for example when mycotoxin is um, affecting your brain your blood vessels will uh, become more narrow the blood flow will decrease uh, the inflamed uh, disc uh, will be affected and you won't see contrast as well as you should and by the way when they started their treatment you can see here they started to see much better and contrast scale improved and then they risk exposed and went back and then they started treatment again it went up also msh msh is an important hormone melanocyte stimulating hormone that uh, will inhibit inflammation in the brain and in organs and uh, here uh, in mold exposure we can see high leptin and low msh meaning there is a lot of inflammation in the brain with all the symptoms inflammation in guts problems with immune system allergies autoimmune diseases and when they start treatment msh starts to go up and the inflammation in brain decreases and these changes uh, may be due to dysfunction of hypothalamus that regulates uh, a lot of functions in our body and also pituitary gland that regulates all the hormones all the endocrine organs in our body they gave this patient cholestyramine this is their binder that will bind toxins from the bile and don't let them go back uh, and reabsorb into the body one more thing i wanted to tell you is uh, chronic lyme disease as here you can see that chronic lyme disease may resemble um, the chronic uh, mold exposure and those people who don't get better on treatment of chronic Lyme's disease must think about mold okay what should you do if you have problems or if you see mold in your house first of all always eliminate contact with mold remove it struggle with it do remediation move somewhere into the other apartment if it's possible frequent cleaning even you don't have health problems always fight with mold if you have mold 
clarify the cause of mold and get rid of it. If the mold is growing too deep or you have too much of it, uh, call for special services. All chronic illnesses must be treated in complex and one of the most important measures is hygiene. Keep indoor spaces low in dust. Mold loves dust very much. Dump cleaning, mopping is better than dry cleaning. If you use vacuum cleaner, please use HEPA filter. For construction, diffusion tight materials should be used. Tiles, plastic special paints, vinyl wallpaper, glass fiber wallpaper. Use antiseptics for construction materials. Always control your humidity. Buy the tester for yourself. It should be not more than 50, the relative humidity. Better look here. I have less than 40. Hmm. Good. And do not use humidifiers or aquariums also can increase uh, humidity. Try not to have home plants because soil always has mold. At least don't put it into your sleeping area. Provide adequate ventilation. No carpets in bathroom. Don't close the door after washing yourself. Keep the curtain dry. Wet towels. Put it outside to the balcony, to the street. Next, there is specific immunotherapy. Uh, when you give some allergen in more and more and more and more doses to uh, teach your immune system to be more tolerant to it. Not always very effective. Also, one study showed that prescription of uh, antifungals can help, like azoles, itraconazole. Also, intravenous gamma globulin may help. And currently popular binders. We're talking about cholesteramine and others have uh, limited uh, scientific proof of efficacy as opposed to results of Dr. Shoemaker that I showed you his investigation. There are some problems with these binders, by the way. They can interfere with some uh, drugs and uh, they also can bind uh, vital vitamins, microelements that may uh, actually cause some deficiencies, but they help to remove toxins. Dear friends, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for uh, sharing this video and commenting it. Thanks to everyone uh, who is supporting this channel. Your help is very valuable for me. And I'm waiting for you in the next videos. We will talk about parasites. We will talk about uh, uh, radon, the radioactive gas that is, by the way, the risk factor and number two cause uh, for um, lung cancer after smoking. So we'll have a lot of interesting topics. See you in the next videos. Goodbye. Don't be afraid, Dr. Eagle. It's not the cure for